I want you to know that God does have a dream. For in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, I know the thoughts that I think, not about you, but he said in the New King James Version, I think them towards you. You see, Elohim, the creator God, has two dreams. It's a dream about you and your personal life. But it's also a dream for you and how you fit into the church and into the community. And I say that especially to the young people. I want you to know that God has a dream about you like a father does a son or a daughter. And the father has a dream for you where he wants to plug you in and to do something very special through your life. You see, God dreamed a dream and it was you. Now you need to hear that, that God the Father dreamed a dream and it was you. He dreamed a dream about you. So while in prayer Saturday, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, the spirit of, re re the spirit of resurrection will be present to raise dead dreams, dr dreams that have died along the way. So this morning on this Resurrection Sunday, perhaps it's time to awaken, now listen, his dream for your reality. To awaken the Father's dream for your reality. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, reading out of the Passion Translation, yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, he will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into, into you. Notice this, the spirit of resurrection that lives in you. Pray with me, Father, bless the reading of your word on this Resurrection Sunday. I do pray, Holy Spirit, that you lead us and guide us and help us to see and understand. We pray it in Christ's name and everybody said amen. amen. Quickly, laying a foundation. God was the first dreamer. You see, God moves and he speaks in dreams. And the Bible Again and again, it says, and God came to him in a dream, and God spoke to him in a dream. So you need to learn to discover Elohim, creator God, discover Elohim's dream for your life, and there you will find God moving and speaking. If you would like to see God moving in your life, then get into the dream that he has for you. If you want to see God move in and through your family, then discover the dream Somebody needs to get a hold of this. You need to discover the dream that God has for your family. And when you discover that dream, you'll find God moving and speaking inside of that dream. Number two, God does have a dream. Ephesians chapter one, long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind. He had us in mind. My father was thinking about me before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world, he looked into the future and he saw you. He saw your children, your grandchildren. He saw me. His thoughts were upon me long before this ever started. He had his mind on us, had settled on us as the focus of his love. Oh my God. He settled on you. That's the focus of his love. For God so loved the world that he gave everything. When it comes to you, he can't help himself. You are the focus of his love. To be made whole and holy by his love. Long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. What pleasure he took in planning this. His mind was on us. His love was on us and he decided to adopt us with all the good, the bad, and the ugly about you and me. He still decided to adopt us. He said, I'm going to take you like you are and I'm going to work with it. I love you 
And my love is focused on you. I want you to sense the Father's love on this Resurrection Sunday. He thinks about you. God initiated a great dream. And that dream was you. In the very beginning, when he said, let us make man in our image, he was dreaming about you. When he gave Abraham the promise, he was dreaming about you. When he gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he was dreaming about you. When he spoke the love songs to David, he was dreaming about you. When he spoke to the major and minor prophets, he was dreaming about you. After over 400 years of silence and John the Baptist broke that silence with the message of repentance, he was dreaming about you. And when he lifted up his head and he said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, he was dreaming about you. Amen. You need to know that. God had a great dream and that dream was you. Number three, Elohim included a dream in your genetic code. It's in your genetics, this dream factor. The Bible said in Genesis 37, then they said to one another, speaking of Joseph, look, this dreamer is coming. This dreamer, this dreamer. You need to understand that it's encoded in you to dream. You can't help it. You were created in his image and my father is a dreamer. It's a part of your genetics. It's a part of your makeup. It's in the fiber of your being. You see, you need to know this, that you daydream because he dreamed first. When you find yourself daydreaming, just understand you're taking after your father. As you're daydreaming about yourself, your family, your career, your business, your church, your ministry, you're daydreaming because your father is a dreamer. I want you to realize these three simple points. I want you to grab a hold of them because they're important as I get into the real meat of my message and the point that I want to leave with you today. That you serve a God that's a dreamer. And it comes natural to you to dream. You see, God moves and he speaks in dreams. So discover his dream for your life. And there, and there it is, you'll find him moving. The tragedy this morning is this, that there's a place where dreams go to die. Waiting. Waiting. <laughs> Waiting. The prison where dreams go to die. Genesis 40 Again, speaking of Joseph in the prison, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but he forgot him. Think of Joseph. He said, I have a dream. He was a dreamer. His brothers were jealous. They threw him in the pit. They sold him. He goes to Potiphar's house. He's lied upon. He's thrown in prison. And then he's forgotten. He's forgotten by the chief baker and butler, just left, just left out in the cold, Joseph. He was forgotten. You see, Joseph waited nearly 15 years before he realized his promotion. Nearly 15 years from the time his brothers sold him until Pharaoh put him at his right hand. 15 years he waited for that dream to come true. Waiting is the prison where dreams go to die. There are people in this room and watching online that are dealing with a danger of unexpected waiting. We all deal with this waiting on the dream to come true. Disappointment sets in, discouragement comes, doubt, depression, defeat. Psalms chapter six, the writer said it this way, my soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord, how long? Deep anguish, waiting for the dream. I'm not sure about you, but I imagine, I just, I just imagine there were times when when Joseph really struggled, just waiting upon the fulfillment of his dream, lied upon, sold into slavery, forsaken and abandoned. There were times I'm sure where he just wanted to quit. And like David, he said, my soul is in deep anguish. There are people in this room again and watching online that I know that your soul is in anguish because you've seen a marriage crumble before you. 
You've seen a business that you put your blood, sweat, and tears into collapse. You've seen the, the bad report from the doctor. You've watched your children that you raised and the fear and the admonition of the Lord. You've watched them as they've gone out into the world and they've become that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter. And so there are people that are, their soul is in anguish as they're waiting. And they say, like the psalmist did, how long, O oh Lord, how long will I see? How long before I see the dream that you gave me for my, my marriage, my ministry, my business, my children? How long, oh Lord, before I see the fulfillment of that dream? There's a poem that I came across. It's called, The Place Where Dreams Go to Die. Listen to these words just quickly. I've heard of a place that's not very far. Just knowing it's there makes me cry. There's a road going in so heavily traveled, it's the place where dreams go to die. Too many people have visited there, that graveyard of ideals and hopes. Their last respects paid, they leave brokenhearted and bound by invisible ropes. For they had grown weary, deep disappointments, and losing the joy they once knew. And battered and bruised, they silently wept, believing their dreams won't come true. The graves are unkept there, grown over with weeds, and the wreckage of lives gone to waste. I hate to admit that I know the place. I've been there myself once or twice. I'm searching for peace. I let go of dreams, but that is just too high a price. For some unknown reason, my dreams keep returning. I really don't understand why. You see, graveyards are full of great ideals and missed opportunities and unfulfilled greatness. I've looked at graveyards before with the tombs down here, here in Beaumont on, on Pine Street. You go by Magnolia Cemetery, you see those tombs, those tombstones that have been there for years. And you often wonder, who are those people? What lives did they live? What victories and defeats did they experience? What unfulfilled dreams did they take to the grave with them? What lies there? Missed opportunities. Great ideals that they just never fleshed it out. How many are in that graveyard? Now listen, here's a statement for you. Dreams don't come true. They are true. Now just start living them. Wow. I know this because of Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know the thoughts or the dreams that I have towards you, towards you. So dreams don't come true. They are true. Just start living them. Start living the dream that God has for you. Step into that dream moment. It's there that you find God moving and speaking. Live the dream that God has placed inside of you. It's, it's coded into your genetics. You, you daydream because he's a dreamer. That's just a part of who we are. We can't help ourselves. That's why the brothers, they saw Joseph coming. They said, look at this dreamer. Here he comes. But the fact is we're all dreamers. We can't help but dream. And in this room this morning, there are dreams, dreams, unfulfilled dreams. I've said to you through the years that I, one of the things that I, I, I fear is a senseless death and, and a wasted life. I, I don't want to waste my life. I don't, I don't want to, to, to live a, 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 I don't want to live a life where I never see the fulfillment of my dreams. I want to empty myself completely. Paul, writing to Timothy, said, I finished it. I did everything that he told me to do. And I have, I am now being poured out. He emptied himself of everything. Live full and die empty. Oh my God. Live full and die empty. Oh my God. Come on, guys, listen. God has a dream about you and a dream for you, and you need to step into that dream. But there are dreams that have yet to be fulfilled. People are just waiting, waiting for a dream to come true. Quit waiting for it. It is true. Just start living the dream. <laughs> I know the dreams that I have towards you. Dreams, waiting. The place where dreams go to die. 
If you're not careful, it's the place that dreams go to die. But now let me give you my point about resurrecting your dream. A single seed dream. It can be about your education, your career, your business, your marriage, your children, your ministry, whatever. But a single seed dream. John chapter 12, verily, very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Huh. We're talking about when dreams are resurrected. There are dreams in this room and online that people have watched them die. And they're in front of their very eyes, they watched it die. And now they're in anguish. But I can tell you this morning that dreams can be resurrected. Whether it's your marriage, your ministry, your business, your career, your health, he's in the business of resurrecting dreams. I know this. And there's a spirit of resurrection in this room today. And there are dreams that don't have to be taken to the graveyard, but you can live them right now, here and now. Quit waiting for it to come true. It is true. Just live it. You see, you have to know that things do die. It's a part of the process in the kingdom of God, death, burial, and resurrection. You have to know that dreams oftentimes have to be born again. Because the first time, it's more of the flesh than anything. And God wants it to be born again so it can be of the spirit. So often, we have these dreams and God has to allow the death of a vision or the death of a dream and let it be resurrected so he can give it back to you. And it better reflects who he is instead of who you are. Dreams oftentimes have to die. But also, you have to know that it's a single seed dream in the beginning. But when you allow it to go through the death, burial, and resurrection process, then it results in the multiplication of life. That's the kingdom. Whenever you have a dream and suddenly you watch it die and you back away from it and you let it go and then God resurrects that dream, this time it comes back and it's in the, it's in the category of multiplication. Suddenly God turns your story into a testimony and you're able to help other people through the process. It's a dream. It's a dream that's more than just starting a business. It's a dream about you helping others to start businesses. It's a dream that it's more. You see, in the beginning, this was just a single seed for you. But God oftentimes will let it die and let it be buried and then resurrected so it can multiply. That's a part of God's kingdom. It's multiplication. And now it's a God dream. You've been through the process. You've been to hell and back. And now you can help others to go there and come back. It's a part of the process. It's multiplication. The greatest vision, or excuse me, the greatest version of your dream is on the other side of the grave. Uh, you, you, you see, you, you start out with this marriage and you think, this marriage, oh, it's just everything that I thought it would be. And then it crashes and it burns. But know that on the other side of that death, and that burial is a resurrection. And the new version of your marriage is going to be better than the first version of your marriage. Because what was a single seed is now multiplied. Am I making any kind of sense? He wants to resurrect it. So it can multiply. And now your marriage, your ministry, your business on the other side of the grave is 10 times more than what it was before. Think about it. Romans 6. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. The word newness there in the Greek means renewal, unprecedented, uncommon, or unheard of. Look at that. Renewal of something that's unprecedented. It's uncommon. It's unheard of. He said, even so, we also should walk in this newness, this renewal of what's unprecedented, of what's uncommon, of what's unheard of. You understand? That's how God wants you to live. It's time to walk in the unheard of dream for an uncommon life. Yes. 
God wants you to walk in this unprecedented life, this uncommon life. This is what God wants for you. He doesn't want you to do anything common. Do nothing common. Do nothing ordinary. Oh, young people. Oh, my goodness. Don't live a common, ordinary life. Mediocre. Just to get by. Don't do that. But get up every morning with a sense of destiny. That my life is not my own. It's been bought with a price. And I'm a steward of this opportunity and this moment. I'm to steward the breath of life that God's given me. And there's a calling on my life. And he had a dream for me and a dream about me. And there's a place for me. And I'm going to fulfill that dream. I'm going to be a daydreamer. And God's going to speak to me. I'm going to discover my dream. For it is there that I will find him moving and speaking in and through me. God, it's time. Know this, young people. I'm 61 years old. I've got fewer days in front of me than I've, I've got behind me. Listen, you need to know this, that life is a gift and an uncommon, uncommon, uncommon life awaits you. Do nothing common. Mean to do nothing common. Intend to do nothing common. Do something that's unprecedented. Do something that's unheard of. Do something. Do something. That's what he put inside of you. Let the world, let the world reject you. Let the church misunderstand you. But stand up. If you're not willing to stand alone, men will never stand with you. You've got to stand up alone and face the world and do what God's called you to do. Precedent and uncommon. You have to activate, though, this resurrection power that's inside of you. If these dreams are going to live again, you have to activate this resurrection power. Philippians 3.10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. They go hand in hand. If you know him, he's going to be constantly trying to take you to a new level. If you know him, he's constantly going to be taking you to that which is uncommon and unprecedented, unheard of. He never leaves things as they are. He's constantly calling you heavenly. Seated with him in heavenly places. And he's trying to call you up to that standard. Up to that level. He wants you to live from heaven to earth, not earth to heaven. Activate it. That I may know him, the power of his resurrection. The word power there in the Greek <laughs> means inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Do you understand? By nature, you're an overcomer and not a quitter. There's no quitters in this room. There is no quitters in the kingdom of God. There's no such thing. We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. There's more to us. Every, what was it, years ago, Cindy Morris gave me a word. She said, this is a word for you, pastor. The battle is the reward. The next battle is the reward of the warrior. The next battle is the reward of the warrior. She was telling me, you'll never be happy if you're not in a fight. You'll never be happy. That's why I've told you through the years, people give me swords, knives, and guns. If you want to buy me a new gun, please feel free. But I've had people <laughs> that God told me to give you a gun or a knife. or I, I've got these things. It's, it's, it's in my DNA. The reward, the next reward of the warrior is the next battle. You win one, you got to fight again. And that's been my life, all my life, to be the pioneer, the first, cutting edge, out there first. And it's a part. And there are times that I thought, God, why are you doing this to me? But that's my calling. It's in my 
DNA. Suzanne says, you feed on stress. You feed on it. It's the food of champions. You can't, you feed on it. You just eat it. Can't help it. There's something in me that want me that will not allow me to waste a day, to waste a moment, to waste a breath, to realize that there's a world out there that's waiting for someone to stand up. By nature, there's a power that's inherent inside of you. You say, I can't do this. Yes, you can. You say, Pastor, I feel like quitting. You can't. Listen, failure is not final. There's not, just get back up. You're not a failure until you quit. Don't quit, get up again. They hit you and knock you down, get up and go in at it, go at it again. The word resurrection here in Philippians 3 means a standing up again. A stand, there's a power that's inherent inside of you. It's in your nature. By nature, you're an overcomer. By nature, you can't help yourself. There's no quit in you. Don't listen to the enemy. Don't give in to the devil. Don't quit. And there is a resurrection. A resurrection. A standing up again. So you need to dig up your dream and tell it, stand up again. You, you need to take a shovel, a spade, and you need to go to the graveyard where dreams go to die. And you need to dig up your dream. You need to dig it up and say, get up. We're not finished. I'm not done yet. There's resurrection in you. And Holy Spirit is heaven's grave robber. And he has come here today to dig up your dream. Stephen, come help me. Mm. The grave robbers in the room. Mm. And he wants to dig up your dream. Encoded in your personal DNA is the dream of your creator. Psalms 139, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. So I wanna ask you, What does your soul know about you and your future? What does your soul know about your dreams? What does your soul know about your daydreaming? What does your soul know that you're not telling us. What dreams do you have that you only whisper to God in private? What dreams? Romans chapter eight, verse 11 said that there's a spirit of resurrection that lives inside of you. And on Saturday, Holy Spirit spoke to me. The spirit of resurrection will be present to raise dead dreams.